So uh, all uh, good mathematicians I know of, uh, they typically met some person who influenced their interest in uh, mathematics at early age. And usually it's either a school teacher or a relative. Mm -hmm. So in my case, uh, it was my father who uh, is university professor, astronomer, and he was buying a lot of books in physics and astronomy for me to read because he wanted me to become a ph physicist or an astronomer. But uh, in those books, I saw some formulas and I wanted really to understand them better. And for this, I needed to study math. So this is originally how I came to math. In math, uh, which is maybe like four or 5,000 years old, the three main areas originally developed uh, were astronomy by, because of practical needs, mm -hmm. geometry because of agricultural needs, mm -hmm. to measure agricultural land plots, and uh, so that was obviously important, and uh, number theory mm -hmm. to, count, to count things uh, obviously important for economy and business. And so then astronomy eventually <laughs> already 200 years ago became more uh, close to physics and uh, stopped to be viewed as uh, part of mathematics. But the other two areas, number theory and geometry, they of course are two fundamental areas of modern mathematics. So my work is to build new bridges between number theory and geometry. So number theory studies numbers and numbers like discrete objects. So it's very difficult to uh, understand them uh, because they are discrete objects and uh, a priori we, we do not have uh, easy ways to deduce their properties. On the other hand, Geometry is like uh, related to images, and images uh, usually we understand them in a diff using different part of the brain. So for people who, whose prevailing hand is right hand, then geometry uses uh, left hemisphere, whereas uh, to understand numbers we use logical right hemisphere. So numbers like discrete objects geometry images continuous objects and one some of the most important breakthrough in modern mathematics show up when you use simultaneously two parts of your brain the left and the right and when you use simultaneously geometrical thinking continuous and study discrete objects like in number theory so my work also closely related to this and it builds new bridges between geometrical thinking and uh, logical thinking in mathematics. So I am attracted to participate in new developments. And in particular, several years ago, uh, one of people who graduated the same high school as I, uh, he tried to establish a new university of new type in Europe, in Switzerland, who would be like uh, in the future, who could which could grow in the future to the level of Harvard and Princeton, private universities, but in Europe. Because in Europe there is still no private university which is as strong as uh, Harvard or Princeton. But unfortunately, due to some financial reasons uh, uh, and due to pandemic, uh, he did not succeed. And so then after that project failed, when I heard about Westlake University, uh, my perception of, of uh, the emergence and development of Westlake University was like maybe this is the Chinese analog of such project in Europe to uh, fund and to develop a private university which in due course can become like a new Princeton or Harvard, but this time in China. So I was very much interested in Westlake University. I talked with many people in Tsinghua University and in Japan and other countries about Westlake University. And uh, uh, everyone was very positive about Westlake University. So I, I became very interested to join it and to help it develop further. 
Well, potentially it can be a very important uh, role given the international uh, nature of Westlake University uh, in comparison to other uh, leading Chinese universities. So uh, th there is a, a very major problem which I've been discussing uh, with many mathematicians uh, for over one year. This problem is that uh, the winners of all international mathematical competitions usually mostly Chinese students. But if we look at uh, advanced res mathematical research, and there uh, often uh, the leaders are awarded with some international prizes like the Fields Medal, then we immediately observe that the number of uh, Chinese mathematicians from mainland China who, who received uh, Fields Medals is zero, mm -hmm. unfortunately. There is something which is missing at the university level of mathematical education, which is present in other countries, like Russia or USA, because there are many Fields Medalists from Russia, from France, from Britain, and from USA, and maybe which is not yet uh, very strongly developed in China. And this thing maybe is the decisive thing which eventually makes such huge difference that in the numbers of Fields Medalists. And so, I'm, so, for example, this winter school we plan to organize in February, it actually aims to fix, to try to fix this problem. Because we'll use those things which typical in uh, successful uh, mass centers in those countries which produce Fields Medalists. But we use them for young uh, students in uh, China. Advanced research requires uh, ability to be uh, visionary to produce entirely new concepts, entirely new ideas, not to follow some previous developments in very technical way, and then uh, in slightly improve papers which slightly improve some other papers, which slightly improve some other papers, and so on and so on, which is typical uh, technical work. But really to propose new directions and new ways to think about some complicated mathematical objects. So this requires like, uh, kind of uh, flight in your thought, mathematical thought, from the ground level to 10 kilometers high, like a plane. And so we need to support young researchers to help them, like to give them more engine power to fly so high. And so I'm very keen to help uh, young Chinese uh, talents in mathematics to fly higher in terms of their future advanced research. And because I, one of my students was awarded Fields Medal, Kocher Birker, I have some experience how to um, help young researchers to reach uh, stars. Yeah, so uh, mathemat modern mathematics became very advanced and technical. And uh, typically mathematicians have difficulty to explain what is the substance of their research to scientists. <laughs> and so, but in my case, I'm very happy to uh, collaborate with people from many areas. And in particular, later this week, I plan tomorrow, I plan to attend a conference in quantum physics, even though this is uh, uh, from the first glance, it's very far away from mathematics and number theory, but there are new emerging relations between modern mathematics and quantum theory, which may have enormous practical applications in the near future. For example, to quantum computing and quantum computers. And uh, also a couple of years ago, I talked with some um, uh, unicorn company. Unicorn means more than $1 billion investment fund in Boston, which is formed by former graduates of Harvard and MIT. So they're trying to build the largest quantum computer in the world. And so I talked with them about some mathematical aspects and then I actually g gave to them some idea which is very recent new idea in mathematics, which came from Japan. And, um, and they told me that actually they can use this idea for their practical work to build quantum computers. So I was very impressed that ideas from one part of human knowledge like mathematics very abstract, can actually be of great use in a very far away area like uh, quantum computers.
Another very important application of number theory in mathematics is, of course, to chat GPT. So the main problem with chat GPTs is that no one knows why they work. So we know they work, but we do not understand why. This is why people like uh, Elon Musk, they like make videos, scaring videos, like we need to be scared of what chat GPTs can do with us in the future, and we need uh, a certain loss and so on. But the reason is, the main reason is we don't understand why they work. And people who can really help and help everyone to understand why chat GPT works is mathematicians because chat GPTs were built by engineers, computer scientists, without involving mathematicians. So I'm very interested to be involved in such interdisciplinary work to really understand why chat GPT work and then help to develop from a mathematical point of view them further. And this is very serious because we're talking potentially about trillions of dollars of uh, industrial developments using chat GPT. Modern digital economy is uh, based on a very substantial use of uh, mathematics and in particular, amazingly, number theory, which just studies numbers, which seems to be as far as possible from any practical applications, has become uh, the most applicable part of all of mathematics because of its applications in coding and cryptography, without which uh, uh, it's impossible to use uh, safely a mobile phone to make bank payments, uh, uh, to conduct uh, secure uh, communication online. Uh, it's all based on number theoretical discoveries in the last 40 years. And when those discoveries were made, 40 years ago, nobody thought they would become so important for practical applications, but now they underlie a, a lot of uh, uh, modern infrastructure in the digital economy. And uh, then, of course, now we are in AI era, and it's expected that there will be further new applications of number theory and related structures to artificial intelligence. So in, in, Without mathematics, we just simply cannot progress uh, with new industrial revolution, which is uh, digital and AI. And so, in particular, if we look at one of the most sophisticated and smartest countries, Japan, they uh, announced three years ago $100 billion investment in, in the digital and AI sector. And substantial part of that investment goes to mathematicians. Among uh, 60 of PhD students and uh, postdocs, I worked with uh, maybe 10% um, were women. So it's a small percentage. And uh, those uh, female students who I worked with, they were very courageous outside mathematics. So for example, one of them was riding a horse and uh, also flying on a planer on weekends. So it was clear that she is extremely courageous in all respects. And so her PhD study in mathematics was another uh, application of her courage ca character. I really think that we need to substantially increase the number of female mathematicians by several reasons, in particular because then the nature of mathematical research may positively change in the future with more impact from female researchers. So one of the main problems, uh, while we have so few female mathematicians, it was analyzed in some uh, study conducted in Cambridge University. And uh, so the conclusion was that uh, un at undergraduate level, female students doing well in mathematics. But then very few of them decide to continue as PhD students. And one of the reasons is that at the undergraduate level, uh, students have uh, frequent or constant contact with supervisors and teachers. But when you switch to PhD level, then you become more autonomous and you do not have so much uh, contact with your uh, supervisor if you're doing uh, theoretical mathematics. 
and this uh, relative uh, decline or reduction of human contact with uh, the supervisor or teacher plays a major role in the decision of female undergraduate students not to continue as PhD students in mathematics. But in comparison in chemistry or physics, uh, experimental chemistry or experimental physics, there is no such problem because at the PhD level all students in experimental chemistry or physics, they immediately become part of a research group with a supervisor in laboratory and they have to come to the laboratory every day and they meet their supervisor every day and so this close contact with the teacher or supervisor still continues at the PhD level and so in those areas the, the, the problem of uh, smaller numbers of female researchers is not so prevalent as in mathematics. So it seems that in mathematics in order to increase the number of PhD students first of all we need to advertise more mathematical uh, PhD opportunities for female students but secondly we really need to provide different kind of uh, uh, supervision for PhD students who are women and uh, uh, the supervision should include more frequent uh, contact with the supervisor and other senior tutors uh, to enable them to feel part of a, a group and uh, to receive more support and encouragement for their mathematical study. It's hard to talk about future of mathematics because uh, even though it is the furthest, the most remote part of human knowledge from being uh, uh, taken by AI systems, still it will be definitely affected a lot by uh, systems like ChatGPT. Namely, mathematicians for the first time in the history of our civilization uh, continuing to conduct their research. Often they will have collaborators and collaborators will be chat GPT systems, not humans, but chat GPT systems. So it's a great opportunity to use uh, specific human brain uh, functions, like in particular integral vision, uh, which again is related to the left hemisphere, uh, with, together with uh, AI system, which of course is based on very logical perception of everything, but cannot think in an integral way in many respects. So it opens a great potential for future developments on, in mathematics and uh, I think we'll hear about some of such developments already in the next five years. Uh, as for applications of mathematics to the whole uh, industry, economics, and of course uh, without mathematics uh, it's impossible to be successful in conducting uh, to be leaders in uh, the current uh, industrial revolution, which is artificial intelligence and digitization of uh, various sectors of economy. So I think um, uh, major leaders of major corporations and companies understand that very clearly. And uh, so we are in Hanzhou, not far from uh, Alibaba campuses, and. Uh, uh, one of former CEO of Alibaba was Jack Ma, and Jack Ma made various uh, uh, talks uh, about the importance of increasing mathematical mindfulness of the whole population in order for countries to be leaders in the AI revolution. So even people like, uh, uh, not scientists, but leaders of major companies, they clearly understand the importance of mathematical education uh, for successful developments of the future in those countries which want to be leaders in, in the ongoing industrial revolution.